This comment tells me that a lot of y'all don't know how combat damage works. And that's okay, even experienced players get it wrong. So let me try to break it down in more of a visual sense for everyone. This jar represents a 3-3 creature. And this smaller, insignificant, stupid, ugly little piece of represents a 2-2 creature. And this big boy will represent a 6-6 creature. It does not have trample yet. All of the water inside of this jar represents combat damage. And by the time that we finish assigning all the damage, there should be no damage left in this jar. This goes for any creature. Currently how it works is that we order blockers. So let's say I'm going to do this. 3-3 three, three first, and then the 2-2 two, two second. That's just telling me which one's taking damage first, which one's taking damage second. And then players get the chance to respond with tricks or abilities. But if nobody wants to do anything, then we move to assigning damage and then damage. There's no point in between assigning damage and dealing the damage where you can put tricks in there. Now what usually happens is that we assign lethal damage to the first thing, and then we put the rest of the damage in the second thing. Let me show you. So this is going to take three damage worth of damage. Since that's assigned lethal damage, we can move on to the next creature. And then this will take the two damage. But remember I said all this damage has to go somewhere and this jar has to be empty. So what actually happens is that we put all the damage on the last creature, typically. Most of us don't really realize this and we don't really specify it because it's kind of unnecessary to. So we just kind of shortcut that. But I think what most people think is that that damage just disappears. When that's not the case, that damage has to go somewhere. So what a lot of people don't realize is that I can actually over assign damage to things. So let's say first example, I want to assign damage to the 3-3. Three, three. I could over assign three damage. I could do all of the damage if I want to. Now that's assigned at least lethal damage and more. We can move on to the next one. I used up all my damage, so this survives. A little bit fell in there, but that, that's supposed to go in there. So now let's say my 6-6 six, six has trample. How does that work? The way that trample works is that any excess damage that's left over can go to the face or to the planeswalker or to the battle that you're attacking. But how do we get excess damage? The way that we do it is that, that everything that's blocking the creature has to receive at least lethal damage, and then anything left over from that is excess damage. So that's when over-assigning things isn't necessary because you can just throw it to the face. So let's assign the damage from my trampling creature to the first creature, about three damage there, and then to the second creature. So that's three, that's two, one damage left over that can go to the face. So with the new way of doing things, what's changed? Well, with the new combat system, nothing's changed. It's exactly the same. You have to assign at least lethal to all the blockers, and then any excess left over goes to the face. What I think is confusing some people is that they think they can assign one damage here, and then one damage here, and then the rest is excess damage that can be trampled over. But remember, trample isn't about what's left in the jar. It's about what you've assigned as lethal to everything that's blocking. So once you've filled up everything, then that becomes enough to have excess left in the jar and that's what can go to the face. So you have to fill all the jars first, and then what's left over is excess damage. All of the keywords are going to work pretty much exactly the same. Hopefully that helps.